We invite you to join us as we're about to go live here at the St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. We invite you to be with us this morning, live from St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. We're going to give people a moment to get on, and we will be getting started around 11 or shortly after that.
Good morning, good morning. Uh, we're here at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we thank God for all the viewers who are uh, tuning in with us this morning. Uh, we're going to call Deacon Hermann Weaver to come forth now and to pray for us. And following him, we'll have scripture reading uh, by Deacon Robert Flowers. Let us pray. Most precious Father, it's indeed a pleasure to be in your presence this morning. And Father, I want to start off by thanking you how you saw it in your heart to allow us all another day. Father, I ask a special prayer today. The devil is busy and the devil's trying to keep us from coming into the house of worship, but he can't keep the worship out of us. Father, I thank you for everything that you've done and I thank you for all the things that you're going to do. I want to continue to pray for the shepherd of this church, Lord, and all the shepherds out there in the world, Lord. And Father, we just want to continue to give you all the praise and all the glory. And if there's anyone out there, Lord, that's that's feeling a little under or down, I pray for them right now, Lord. And I pray that they would just give it up to you. If there's anything displeasing, Lord, I pray that we just lay it down now. But Father, we just want to continue to praise you give you all the praise and all the glory. And Father, we just want to say, we, we love you because you first loved us. In your son Jesus' name, let us all say, amen. Good morning, everyone. I will be reading Psalms 91. Uh, I think with everything going on in the world today, this is a very appropriate scripture. Uh, it may be a little lengthy, but, but I think it serves the purpose. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perils pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, Lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I read Psalm 91 in its entirety. Uh, may the Lord bless this, re this reading and healing. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Weaver and Deacon Flowers for your participation on this morning. Uh, just briefly, we're gonna have our church clerk come and give us some brief announcements uh, to instruct us on where we are going to be going from here. Uh, we thank God for those who are viewing us now. For the church family, we ask if you are watching and you have friends on your list, please share this video. Please share this live stream this morning that we can reach all of our people this morning. Amen. Good morning, church family. We bring you greetings from St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, where the uh, pastor, Jerry Jones, is the pastor. Um, 
I'm going to be brief, but I'm going to leave you with the church phone number and my phone number. We want you to be well aware. We are working diligently to uh, have things in place for all members and community uh, here at St. John's. We do like to share this morning that uh, we sent our deepest sympathy from our church family to the families of Mother Essie Grantham and to the Lee family, passing of Daryl Lee, and also to our church family, uh, Reverend Dr. Arthur White out of Philadelphia. Uh, many of you remember he was our preacher for our 75th church anniversary. Please let's keep all of these uh, family members and friends in your prayers as we continue to go through uh, this process. We just like to announce that uh, we are making provisions, I'm sorry, for uh, those that may be in need of food. Uh, we ask that you please call the church, and that number again is 610. 375-6197. If you call and give us uh, your name, we'll direct you of what to do. Um, if no one answers, please leave a message. We promise to get back to each and every one of you. Also, if you uh, don't get anyone at the church, you can, church members, you can certainly call me at home. You have my phone number. Please do that. Now, most importantly, we all know that the church has to continue to go on. Uh, bills have to be paid. Um, you're wondering how we're going to get our tithes and offering. Well, thank God for these electronic items. Uh, our website is up. If you go on our website, there's a part there for giving. You can submit your tithes and offering through the website. Now to all of the older people that don't feel comfortable submitting through a system, um, there will be someone here on Wednesdays here at the church on Wednesdays and Friday from 10 a.m. to noon. And you certainly can come and drop off your offering and it will be taken care of in the proper place. I remind you once again that all the Lenten services and the Chosen 300, all of that stuff has been canceled. We're asking you to please stay home and be safe. Um, stay to distance as much as you can. Higher Education has also put, in, put out that uh, the report cards, just so the children don't get discouraged, they will be doing the rewarding on April 19th. So we do have time to get our report cards submitting, submitted and uh, Sister Lisa Blunt will follow up with that. We pray that God will continue to strengthen us, that we are able to uh, just stay, uh, stay abreast of everything that's going on. Watch the TV, listen to uh, Governor Wolf and follow his instructions. We're going to take this one day at a time and trust that God, we know that God is in control. I say to you, God bless, be safe, and we love you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Flowers, for those brief announcements. Just want to add with the online giving, we are also able to give through Cash App. Uh, when you go to the website, uh, you can hit the Give button in the menu bar, and you will find instructions there if you want to give online through Tithely Giving. And then at the bottom, you will find the address where you can give your tithes and offering through Cash App. We thank God for you. Uh, at this time, we're going to let a song minister to us. Uh, and after that, following that, we will hear a word from our sponsor. I do believe that we have all taken a station break and now we need to hear from God. We thank God for who, all those who are watching today. We ask that you pray with us as we continue to do God's work here down on the south side of St. John's Missionary Baptist Church.
How many know God is? Yes, he is. It's our all in all. Oh, yes. Come too far. Do you believe that? He's able. Never.
I want to go with him. Yes. Amen. God is our all in all. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again that you have given us the privilege to be able, Lord, to stand before your holy presence on this morning. We realize, O oh God, that it's nothing that we have done that is so good or so great but it's only through your love and through your mercy that you have allowed our golden moments to roll on. And now, God, we reverence you for who we are, for you are our all in all. You are the great I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we thank you for it, God. Now have your way today. Speak to us and speak through us. We need to hear a word from you, God a word that will sustain us and keep us as we travel this barren land. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me this morning to the book of 1 John? The book of 1 John, chapter number five. The book of 1 John, chapter number five. And we will be reading the first five verses. I'll be reading from the New King James on this morning. And it reads, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he? who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Faith under fire, but the fight is fixed. Faith under fire, but the fight is fixed. I came today with a word, a word of encouragement. These are trying times that we are living in. We have never seen anything like this. This coronavirus is an opponent that we have never fought before. It has knocked out the normalcy of life 
It has gotten the attention of the whole world. But there is good news, child of God. The fight is fixed. And you are destined to win. Wow, what kind of boldness and confidence this would give you to know that you are guaranteed a winner. That you can't lose. No matter how powerful or how strong your opponent is. No matter what tricks they may pull. No matter what the advantage over you they may seem to have. You are declared a winner. Well, as unbelievable as that may sound, it is the truth. You don't have to believe me, but come here, Radchat, Meshach, and Abednego. When the decree was made, and they told the king that we will not bow, we will not bend. And even if God doesn't deliver me, they said, I will not bow before you. The word of God is true, y'all. Faith under fire, but the fight is fixed. I know it may not make any sense, but from God's perspective, victory is not determined by the outcome. It is established by the income. In other words, it is established by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith under fire, but the fight is fixed. I know the battle we are facing right now is life-threatening. And I know this opponent might be raising up against you right now. And I know the devil is trying to put fear into your life today. And I know this mountain is standing in your way. But I stopped by to tell you no matter who you are, the answer is still faith. A belief and a trust in the almighty God. Victory is not external. Victory is internal. You see, the world determines victory by what's going on around them or not what's going on around them. They determine victory by the absence of external conflict. But God determines victory by what's going on inside of us. This is the victory, the text says, that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Victory is first an attitude. The attitude of faith. An attitude is defined as a position assumed for a specific purpose. Or a mental position in regards to a fact or a state. When we get God's word in our heart, it produces an attitude. A position assumed for a specific purpose in a mental position with regard to the fact or state that we're in. We need to get an attitude against this opponent called the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus this COVID-19 that has caused a lot of people to understand that there's nothing that we can do about it. Our government can't help us. Our scientists can't help us right now. Nothing can help us, but I know there is a God that can help us because God is. Let me, let me see if I can help you get an attitude this morning. Let me see if I can help you to assume a position for a specific purpose. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let me help you develop a mental position in regard to the fact and the states and the condition that we are facing right now. My brothers and sisters, we are more than conquerors to him that love us and gave himself up for us. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Oh, yes, yes, the Bible reminds us that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal the land. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God has judged us now. God has gotten everybody's attention. It's because we have gotten so far behind 
of what the world has offered us. We support everything that the world has to offer, but God had to step in and to cause us to look at he is still in control. Now, faith is under fire. I don't want you to depend on this thousand dollars that they're trying to give you from the government. We need more than that. We need to be delivered. We need to get an attitude adjustment right now because victory begins with a decision and the decision is to believe God that God told the truth. A matter of fact, Isaiah 53 and one says, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? First John five and five in our text says, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth Jesus Christ is the son of God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Victory is a discipline. It takes disciplined people to manifest victory. Since our victory is in faith and faith is born of the word, we must discipline ourselves. We must discipline ourselves according to the word regardless of what we are facing. Can I get a witness? We got to be like that widow woman with her pots of oil. She went in and shut the door. You have to shut your door to everything that contradicts the word of God in this time that we're living in now. You have to shut the door and, and you got to go into your closet and you have to have faith enough to believe that when God hears your cry, he will answer your prayer. You got to shut everything else out. You got to shut out doubt. You got to shut out confusion. You got to shut out your emotions. You got to shut out some people even sometime. Victory demands that we demonstrate who we are. This is a time that the Christian man, woman, boy and girl should not shrink back, but we put our trust in God. Let's not forget we are still in Lent. Let's not forget that we are in a self-examination mode. Let us not forget that we're in a renewing mode. I don't know about anybody else, but I read the report and I know that my God is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask of. Think of it, even imagine. I know because this is the confidence that I have in him. If I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. And if he hears me, I have what it is. I have victory in Jesus. Victory is not life without problems, my brothers and sisters. Victory is life that faces problems with a promise. For every problem, there is a promise. Victory is faith that clings to the promises of God until that problem is defeated. Oh yes, 2 Samuel 23, verse 9, it tells us, after him was Eleazar, the son of Dudu, the Pelotite, one of the three mighty men with David. When they defiled the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were going away, he rose, and smote the Philistines until his hand was wielded, and his hands were claved into the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. Now, now here is a man who became one with his sword. His hand was claved unto his sword. In other words, his hand became welded to his sword. He held on to the promises until the problem was defeated. And your victory and my victory is becoming one with the word of God. Victory is not based upon people. Sometimes people actually stand in the way of your victory. And I came to tell you today, the answer is still faith. You don't have to believe me. Sometimes you got to just shut the door. Jesus, when he was called to meet Jairus' daughter, Jesus had to put everybody out except Peter, James, and John. The old saying is strength comes in numbers. That's only true to a certain extent. That if the numbers are in faith and the anointing is in the numbers, and if the numbers believe the promises, how many believe that we're going to overcome this? How many believe that faith is the victory that overcomes this world, even your faith? God does not recognize numbers, my brothers and sisters. He has caused us to be in a place that we have never been. We're not able to be in our pews today. We're not able to be surrounded by our friends today. We're not able to have on our nice clothes today. We're not able to meet like we used to. Now we need to be in our secret closets. Now we need to be in our house. And now we need to be the church that God has called us to be. Faith is under fire. You don't have to say amen. But I believe that God 
is causing us to recognize that he is sovereign, that he is soon coming, sending his son back. He's making a way now for the second coming and the rapture. No one knows the day or the hour is gone, but I believe it is near. And we need to get right so the church can go home. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his mercy. Because as long as the church is still on earth, the Holy Spirit is still present. But when the church is raptured up and the dead in Christ shall rise, there is no going to be no more Holy Spirit. And we're living in times now where if you go on the street at certain times, it looked like the rapture took place. Faith is under fire. And we need to get real about who we are. This is how victory goes through a trial. Victory goes through a trial knowing that it's working for your good. Why? Because this light affliction that which is but for a moment, working for us an exceeding and more eternal weight of glory. While we look at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are external. And we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Job said it this way, the Lord knoweth the way that I take and when I'm tired, I shall come forth as pill go. In other words, this is good for us. This will make us better if we trust the Lord, if we lean not to our own understanding, if we're willing to make the sacrifices that God is calling us to make. He has taken us out of our comfort zone. And now, whose side are you on? It doesn't matter what the devil does. It doesn't matter what he throws at us. It doesn't matter what we go through. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God art with me. With his rod and his staff, he shall comfort me. I'm going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Our faith is under fire, but the fight is fixed. It may look bad right now, but the fight is fixed. And at some point, this coronavirus has gone down. It has to go down. It may be not in the first round. It may not be in the second round or even the third round. But my faith tells me that it's going down. And while we're waiting, we need to make sure that we hide behind the cross of Calvary. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and overpower of the enemy and nothing can shall be able to hurt you. I'm not despising, I'm not minimizing that, 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 that what we're dealing with now is deadly. And I'm not even saying that we as Christians will not be touched by it because we will. What I'm saying is that even though we are going through this trying times, I don't know about anybody else, but I'd rather be caught with my work being done for the Lord than being caught with it not being done. Faith is under fire. Now faith has to be tried. Faith has to go through trials to come forth like pure gold. And what are you depending on? The fact of the matter is, as long as the children of God stands in the reader of faith, victory is guaranteed. It just doesn't matter what we may be going through. It may be something that we might have to go through, and it may end tonight. I don't know. It may end tomorrow. I don't know. It may end a month from now. I don't know. But the battle is going to end. This fiery trial is going to end. The storm is going to end. And when it does, you are going to still be standing. You don't have to say, man, I'm going to say it for you because I'm believing for you. The reason why I know that we're going to still be standing, because the same God that woke you up this morning, the same God that still had blood running, running in your vein, the, still, the same God that has protected you so far from this virus, the same God that's going to provide all your needs according to your riches glory is standing still and he wants us to hear his voice. God still speaks today. And we have to believe that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is more powerful than this virus. We got to believe that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who came down through 42 generations, who went through trials and tribulations, who, who went through all the things that he had to go through that we may be able to stand while our faith is under fire. And this is what we got to keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, that even though your faith is under fire, somebody's watching you. Somebody's looking for you to stand still. Somebody's looking for you to have a word for them. 
Somebody's looking for you to make the sacrifices that you need to make, like, like they had to make back in the book of Exodus. When God told the people of God to go make a sacrifice. And when you make the sacrifice, take the blood and put it over your doorposts. This is a time where families got to be in the house. What you need to do is take all your TV devices off. Turn your phones off and begin to bring your family together and pray like you never prayed before. This is a time for us to trust the Lord and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. He will direct your pain. May God bless you and may heaven continue to smile down upon you. Be encouraged because faith is the victory that overcomes this world, even your faith. We will continue to keep you informed on how the St. John's Missionary Baptist Church will be operating. We thank God for you being a part of our viewing this morning. And we pray in Jesus' name that God will cover you. I'm not going to even take it for granted because there may be someone out there that might not be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. I'm not opening the doors to the Church of St. John's this morning. I'm opening up the church of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Let me help you understand that. You got to believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. You got to believe that he walked this earth like you and I. He was human, but yet he was divine. You got to believe that he was crucified on the cross for your sins and the sins of the whole world. You got to believe that they laid him in a bar tomb. And you got to believe that he got up out of that bar tomb on the third day morning with all power in his hands. And you got to believe that he's coming back. If I were you and I don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, all you have to do is ask him right now, Lord, would you come into my heart? I'm a sinner and I accept Jesus Christ's death his burial and his resurrection come into my heart that I might be saved because we don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. We don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. But I do know this, that Jesus is coming back. And if you don't know him, get to know him. Get to know him. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the privilege to be able, Lord, to reverence you for who you are, God. We thank you, God, that you are still sitting high. I see you high and lifted up, and your train still fills the temple. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit and for your Holy Writ, which is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So today, God, we honor you and we worship you for who you are. And we pray, God, as we put our trust and faith in you, that you would strengthen us from the inside out, that our faith will not be in anything other than you. We ask you right now that you would just stretch forth your mighty hands and cover Reading, Pennsylvania, Pour out your blood upon us, God, in the name of Jesus. Healing needs to be taking place. Healing first for a sin-sick soul, then healing against this coronavirus. I'm just asking God that your will shall be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you, God, that you're dependable. We thank you, God, that you're trustworthy. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And it's for his dear sake we pray. Amen. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile down upon you.